Hi, welcome. I'm John Cappiello. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Health Verity. Uh, today, I'll be speaking to you about how we're partnering with AWS to power our privacy protected patient identity resolution, which really advances the exchange and management of healthcare data in real time. I'm going to be going through a little bit about Health Verity, um, some of the challenges in the industry, Health Verity's census solution, uh, some reference architecture, and some of the benefits of partnering with AWS. So, at Health Verity, we have set out to build uh, the technology that enables high governance, privacy compliant data exchange between parties. Uh, and we're doing that across the broadest ecosystem of healthcare and consumer data. We're headquartered in uh, Center City, Philadelphia, but we've been expanding our team all across the country. Uh, Health Verity has recognized from the start that as healthcare data became more diverse and available, uh, the need to connect data across sources to enable the next generation of analytics and applications has never been greater. Our technologies are trusted by some of the largest healthcare organizations and government agencies today, uh, from FDA to Quest Diagnostics. Uh, Health Verity is helping to solve for some of the greatest challenges plaguing our industry. We have built a middleware platform that is rooted uh, in identity privacy, governance, and exchange of data. So it starts foundationally with identity, uh, the ability to connect events about a patient uniquely but anonymously with a high degree of accuracy over time really allows for that uh, near complete picture of a patient's journey uh, in the healthcare ecosystem. You know, from identity, there's, there's the broader scope of privacy, making sure that as we take combinations of data from disparate data sources uh, and different parties that we don't uh, incur any risks of re-identification under HIPAA. Once we've thought about privacy, there's governance, making sure that all data owners always retain that control over who has access to their data and for what purpose. And then once we've tackled identity, privacy, and governance, um, exchanging that data, being able to find patients um, of interest in their cohorts and securing the governance of that data. Uh, but now we move on to actually moving it across the various channels. Uh, so this is leveraged in a commercial way via the Health Verity Marketplace. Um, but we also work with non-commercial data exchanges to collaborate on, with uh, counterparties, uh, whether that's for healthcare and clinical data or consumer data and contracts data. The challenge at hand is really, how do you take these disparate data sources, these, these legacy silos, and, and join them together uh, and create sort of this, this better patient cohort, this better view? Um, you know, you have various sources uh, and silos from uh, acquisitions and mergers of, of the various parties in the ecosystem. We have different data types just based on how they're collected and who's collecting them for what purpose. Um, and then the, the costs are prohibitive typically in terms of you know, how do you consolidate those data sets? And it can take just time or money or both. So the ability to anonymously identify those unique patients across those data silos is really the first step in that ability to, to tie them together. Once we've uh, consolidated the cohort, um, we can really reveal a sort of richer patient journey, um, regardless of where the source information data came from about that patient. So. If you think about the challenge uh, a little bit differently, um, it, it looks a little bit like this. Uh, you've got various uh, records of patient information for this one particular individual, um, but the, you know there's all sorts of different um, examples of this person, right? They use a nickname, they use initials, they may have moved. Um, so it can be really challenging uh, to, to link that patient together and then furthermore to do it in a de-identified basis. Uh, and really, that is one of the foundational pieces of what Health Verity's identity resolution has solved for. Now, when you talk about identity resolution, there's really uh, a couple metrics. Uh, two of the more interesting ones talk about things like uh, false positives. So we take these two de-identified records uh, for two individuals that are not the same person and inaccurately link them together. That would be a false positive. And in the industry, the average there is around a three to 5% false positive rate, whereas Health Verity measures ourselves closer to about a 0.2% false positive rate. And a false negative, the other challenge, would be when you take two anonymous records that are in fact the same person and don't resolve them to the same person. Um, the industry measures around nine to 42% 
uh, false negative rate, depending on the quality of that data. Uh, but health verity measures itself closer to about a point two, around about two percent uh, false negative rate. Um, we do that through a number of techniques. Um, one of the interesting pieces we use is something called bloom filter hashing. Uh, this really allows us to preserve some distance as we think about these de-identified tokens and how similar they might be while still maintaining privacy. Um, it helps account for things like typos and names, and transpositions of letters. Um, we, we leverage a broad use of PII, so we're not limited to any particular fields. We do our best to take in any PII that uh, might help us resolve that identity on an anonymous basis, whether it be their name, location, uh, any other phones, emails, things of that nature. Um, and we use a Bayesian probabilistic model to solve for missing and, and changing fields and still properly and accurately uh, link those anonymous records together. So when we think about probabilistic matching, and one of the challenges that uh, computationally it takes to scale this, uh, we have to think about all the fields that contribute to the probability of what we can see, the observed data for a particular patient. Um, we have to understand whether they should in fact match. Um, maybe they're a typo, but they should in fact be the same uh, result identity. Um, whether they have changed, but again, that might be okay as well. Maybe this patient has just simply moved. Uh, you know, are they the same because of a coincidence, something as simple as a highly frequent name? Um, and we take all of those different values, those probabilities across uh, those examples and more uh, to figure out, you know, what the, the default probability should be um, when, we're, when we're looking at that, that match of that patient. Um, and, and the entirety of all of that evidence is really what, what drives our ability to sort of calculate that, that highly accurate uh, probability that these are in fact the same person or not. One of the things I mentioned is um, bloom filters. Um, that's simply our ability to take um, common strings like the person's name. Uh, we split it up into lots of small pieces uh, so that we have some, pre some preservation of the order of the letters in, in the case of uh, something like called a trigram. Um, we convert that to a bloom filter so we have a good sense of um, the, our ability to then compare those two bloom filters together and understand the, the distance between those as we look at two different uh, de-identified values. Um, and we're able to then leverage that to understand, you know, when we're looking at two values that aren't exactly the same, whether or not they are in fact should be resolved to the same person. What we see here is an example of how this whole workflow operates in our, in our world. And there's two important pieces here to, to focus on. The left-hand side, we have the red identifiable environment of our data source. And you'll note um, in that little green box in the red hand side, the, the red box there is our health areas de-identification engine, which we deploy on premises to help de-identify their data before it leaves their firewall. And on the right-hand side, everything to the right, that's the matching environment where we take those de-identified tokens we've been speaking about and we resolve them to that health verity ID uh, for that, that patient, uh, that privacy protecting patient resolution. You'll note that as they ship data to us, they're leveraging things like AWS transfer uh, when we need to enable uh, SFTP as a protocol for transmitting data. Uh, we, we leverage S3 as a transport protocol for other partners. Um, we also take advantage of API gateway uh, so that we can uh, manage our API using AWS's uh, stack. We take heavy advantage of Lambda uh, and SQS, where we take that ability to have all those massive amounts of rows coming in at scale and fan out to support um, the, the volume we may see, uh, even when we need it, uh, you know, and then when we don't need it, when the volume is lighter, uh, not paying and incurring the charge of all those resources there. On a daily basis, what we're focusing on here is we see the same kind of overall infrastructure, but Again, leveraging AWS to sort of automate those tools and those processing. Um, you'll note the same environments. We have the identifiable environment of our data source on the left-hand side, uh, a more of a, a health verities environment on the right-hand side. And, you know, taking advantage of those tools for S3, uh, API gateway, um, the reactive nature of those S3 events that kind of trigger other processes in our system uh, to, to resolve to the health verity ID, leveraging our matching technology, uh, we're scheduling things in uh, Airflow, for example, but really triggering um, all these events to then take all the processing of the data at scale, um, spinning up uh, ephemeral EMR clusters to process the transactional volume of the data, uh, leveraging S3 as a storage mechanism, 
And we'll even leverage basically the EMR and the transport SFTP uh, or S3 buckets in terms of how we then deliver that data to the clients uh, on the receiving end. There's a couple of use cases um, that to cover here. Um, you know, Health Verity can return uh, the Health Verity ID uh, to an internal party. You know, it's, if they want to basically improve their own patient mastering identity resolution, um, we can also ingest and transform all of their data into a HIPAA compliant data set uh, and make that available in the Health Verity marketplace. Uh, and that marketplace, as I mentioned earlier, really provides a uh, framework for governance where the owner of that data can then approve or deny, you know, the, the delivery and exchange of that data um, or for what use, to who. And then finally, that last piece really, because all of this of uh, the identity is covered, uh, privacy and governance is covered, that ability to exchange the data, Health Verity then takes advantage of many of the AWS technologies to uh, rapidly and efficiently deliver that data between multiple parties. You know, when we think in short about some of the benefits of partnering with AWS. It's really coming down to our ability to manage complex system with less personnel, things like um, Hadoop uh, family and uh, leveraging EMR for things of that nature instead, or instead of having to sort of spin up our entire own Spark cluster, um, taking advantage of serverless technologies like Lambda to really enable on-demand scale, uh, and then leveraging even just sort of basic components like S3 um, that leverage, uh, that allow us to store massive amounts of data, but separate compute from that storage um, and really provide a, a governance and interoperability layer uh, to our partners. So with that, thank you. Again, I'm John Capiello. I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Health Verity. Have a nice day.